Hello and welcome back to Kids Online. This week is the last week in our Faith, Hope and Love series and we are going to look at what the Bible says about hope. So the first thing we're going to do is turn our eyes onto Jesus and worship him. that we hope for and we talk about hope quite often as it's something that we're not sure will happen but we would like it to happen like we hope it's going to be sunny tomorrow or we hope that we might get something we want for our birthday or we hope we can go somewhere and do something but the bible talks about hope as something to be absolutely sure of. Hope in the Bible is to eagerly wait for God to do something that he has promised to do. One way of looking at this, and bear with me, is to look at some of these things that I've wrapped up. Now, I've wrapped them up very carefully and I think you can see 
what they're going to be. You know what that is. What is it? Yeah, it's a mug. You can't see the details of this, but you know what it's going to be. At least I hope you know. Suddenly it looks horribly like a chicken, but it isn't. I can't wrap chickens up. It's a teapot. This one, I'm sure you know what that is. You can't see the detail yet. You can see the outline and you know what it's going to be, even though it's not unwrapped yet. Yes, this is a spoon. And finally, this one was a little bit harder to wrap up. You might not know what it is, but my dog definitely knows what it is. It's his very smelly, dirty ball. And he smells it, he knows what it is. And in a way, our hope in God could be said to be a little bit like that. We know what God has promised. We know the things that we trust him for. And we know that he will deliver on those promises. But right now, we can't see the detail. Shall we check? As soon as I unwrap that ball, that dog will be bounding in here. Yes, spoon. Let's hope this isn't a chicken. You see, I used the word hope there in a different sense. I used a lot of sellotape. Yes, it is definitely a teapot. Perhaps not exactly the teapot you were expecting. Because look, it's got its own, oh, it's got its own cup underneath hence the funny handle. And finally, not finally, the mug. And finally, the ball. Oh dear, I used far too much sellotape. Oh, oh it is smelly and horrible. Should, should we see if somebody knows it's his? Dear, never work with animals. He's not coming in, is he? Where's your ball? Where's your ball? Where's your ball? Where is it? Yeah, it's your ball. Happy days, all happy now. Let's have a look at a story of hope in the Bible when Jesus healed someone. Stories of the Bible. Jesus heals a man born blind. This is Jesus. hey -o! Who is the son of God and the savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He did many miracles and healed people of their sickness. One day, Jesus was walking with his disciples and he saw a man who was born blind. Hey, Jesus! His disciples wondered whose fault it was that this man was blind. Jesus told them it was not because anyone sinned, but rather it was because the power of God could be shown through this man's life. Then Jesus spit on the ground and made mud. He spread the mud over the blind man's eyes and told him, go wash yourself in the pool of Siloam. So the man went and did as Jesus said, and he could see. Wow! The man's neighbors and others who knew him as a blind man wondered if this was the same man is that the same guy? No way. They said, no, he just looks like him. It's me. No, it can't be. But the blind man kept saying, yes, it's me. So the people asked, who healed you? What happened? And the man told them all that Jesus had done for him. Oh, that's what happened. The people asked, 
Where is Jesus now? But the man didn't know. So the people took the man to the Pharisees because it was the Sabbath, the day of rest, and they thought Jesus shouldn't have made mud and healed the man on the Sabbath. The Pharisees asked the man so many questions. Eh, what's going on? And he answered them, I was blind, but now I can see. The Pharisees kept asking more questions. They even brought the man's parents in to ask them questions, but they wouldn't answer because they were afraid of the Pharisees. Finally, the man had enough and yelled, mm, Look, I told you once, why do you want to hear it again? If this man were not from God, he couldn't have made me see. The Pharisees were so mad at the man for saying this that they threw him out of the synagogue. Jesus heard what happened, oh, hey there. and he found the man and asked him, Do you believe in the Son of Man? The man answered, Who is he, sir? I want to believe in him. You have seen him, Jesus said, and he is speaking to you. Wow! Yes, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped Jesus. We see there that Bartimaeus calls out in hope. He knows that Jesus is the Son of God. He knows Jesus has the power to heal him. So he cries out in the hope, the sure and certain hope that Jesus will hear him and has the power to change his life. Now it's really worth noting that Jesus doesn't just come over and heal him. Jesus asks him what he wants. What do you want me to do for you? What do you want? And I believe Jesus asks you and me that very same question. He asks us, what do we want from him? And that's because I think that Jesus really wants to know what's on our hearts. He really wants a relationship with you and me. He wants to talk to us. He wants to hear about our lives and our thoughts and our fears and what we want and what's going on. And then Jesus didn't just physically touch and heal Bartimaeus. He didn't just give him his sight back. He also opened his spiritual eyes inside. And by that I mean that Bartimaeus knew who Jesus was. He knew he was the Son of God. He followed him and he praised him. And in fact, he caused all the people around him to look and ask who Jesus was too. Now, in that miracle, Jesus mixed some spit and some mud to make a paste with his fingers. We're not going to use spit and mud, but we're going to do some finger painting now, too. We are going to make our own um, finger painting paint. And also, this recipe is edible, which doesn't mean it's going to taste nice. It means that um, if you're doing it with a very small child and they actually start licking it, that is fine. Okay. This is what you need. First of all, you will need an adult because you're going to be heating this up in a saucepan on the stove. You will also need as many pots as you want different colours. And you will need some food colouring. You will need um, measuring cups, actually just one measuring cup. You'll need um, a teaspoon. You'll need granulated sugar, corn flour, and you also need some water. Okay, so the first thing is just get the dog hair out of that. So one cup of corn flour. Six tablespoons of sugar. Now I'm going to mix 
those dry ingredients together gently, otherwise it all flowers up everywhere. And then it says add four cups of water. So I'm going to add them one at a time and stir them in to try and make a smooth paste. I've got a feeling it will be lumpy whatever I do. It's very gloopy. So that's one. I'm going to add three more now. seems an awful lot. hope it works. What you need to do now is you need to get an adult to um, heat this on a medium heat and the recipe says until the mixture thickens and starts to come away from the side. So I've been here stirring for a while. It's definitely thickening around the edges. I would say you must keep stirring it. Oh, it's getting really thick now and I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to show you what it looks like. Oh my goodness, it's really gloopy. Let's show you. No time for fine photography now. I'm going to put a heat mat on the table and move it to the table, but be very careful. Use an adult. Obviously the saucepan will be hot and the paint will be hot, so don't put your fingers anywhere near it yet. So I'm hoping to make six colours, I think. So I'm going to divide this mixture in between my six pots. It really doesn't look like something you want to put in your mouth. Yeah. Right, I'm just gonna put the pan right out of the way. So let's start with pink. Looks horrible. Let's stir this one in, see if it looks any better. Um yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's looking pink. That's a bit disappointing. Ugh. Okay, so in the orange pot, let's do yellow. Okay. This is looking a bit more like it. Oh yes, oh yes, that's a beautiful sunny yellow. Look at that one. Right, I'm going to put the one in the blue pot, blue. So, I'm kind of wishing I hadn't used the word edible in the title. There is nothing edible about this. Oh yes, that is a beautiful blue. Right, green. Let's do it. Ew, that is monster green. Right, now with these two, we're gonna do some fun color mixing. Gee, my pink's gone off. Does it have a use by date? January 2020. Ooh, it's a bit dried up. Sadly, I don't think this week I can say only the best ingredients. Okay, it doesn't look very purple, does it? Should we have a look? Ooh. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's lovely. We have got violet, blue, green, and sort of orange. All right. You need paper. You need your finger paints. Ew, there's a blob there. Is that horrible? It might be an idea to prepare a bowl of soapy water and some towels that you don't mind getting dirty. Okay, here goes. So, uh, let's try the blue first. So it's cooled down quite a bit now. It's a little bit warm, but it's very, very gloopy. Look at that, ew. So it's less about painting. Okay, blue. Let's go for let's go for a bit of orange next. Okay. Uh, let's try the purple now. Right, I'm going to go really in. It's like it's like putting your fingers in blancmange. You're probably too young to remember blancmange. Sort of really horrible mousse, really. Wasn't nice back then, but ear. Look at that. Oh, that's a really nice lime green. Okay, there is my 
very textured rainbow. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to stick to fingertips and I'm going to sort of splodge around the paper. Oh dear, that is a lump. So I'm gonna do a centre in the middle and I'm gonna do a stem coming in and then I'm going to do lots of little fine lines just joining up some of the kind of petals or it's almost like a seed head isn't it let's do a full hand print and make an easter chip yeah look at that lovely I don't know why I did both, but I'm just going to print one hand down like this and then peel it off carefully. There. So I'm going to put a little eye here and a beak and some little legs and claws. There, what do you think? Chicks! Our Lent reflection this week, Abby is going to show us how to slow down. So the activity that we've chosen today for slowing is actually doing something that doesn't really feel slow at all. We're gonna go for a, a little walk today. And the thing about slowing is it's not necessarily about slowing what you're doing on the outside, but slowing what you're doing on the inside so that you have more time to spend with God and to notice things a little bit more. If I go on a walk, I wonder if you can hear anything. What can you hear, Edward? There are some birds that are singing and if I went too fast, I might not hear them. When you go on a walk, what are the other things that you see? How about trees? I wonder how old this one is. What about, as it's spring, have you noticed that anything's changed? We've got some gorse in flower. Can you see it? Bright yellow. That's really cool. I wasn't there a couple of weeks ago. And I wonder if we'll see the cows. There's so much that we can see and we can be thankful for when we just slow down a little and take our time to appreciate everything that's around us. Maybe you could go on a walk today and find all the things that you can say thank you for. We're going to finish our session by thanking God for the hope that he has given each one of us. And then we're going to finish with the song Love by, um, actually I think it's called The Golden Rule by um, Nick and Becky Drake. And this time it's filmed at the project Love Your Neighbour, which many of uh, you may have been involved in. Um, and this example is people packing food at warehouses and taking them out to people that have been um, stuck at home and isolating during to, uh, due to COVID. Lord, thank you that you have filled our hearts with hope. Thank you that we have a sure and certain hope in you and your promises to us. Help us to trust you. Amen. See you next week. Bye.
This is Abby. I'm calling from the Love Your Neighbors theme at Gas Street. God said to us the golden rule. 